Today's video is about winterization of your RV. There are two methods of winterizing your RV. You could use the RV antifreeze, a non-toxic solution that you pump through your system, or you can use compressed air. And today I'm going to be using compressed air. I have a toolkit, simple toolkit, for uh, removing the hot water heater drain plug. I have the Vier air compressor that we use for tires. This will be used for pumping air into our water line coming in. The adapters are the size of a water hose and, and they attach to, you'll attach one to your water inlet and you will use the quick connect to attach it to the air compressor. And even though we're using compressed air, there are few places we will still need this RV antifreeze just for the P-traps and drains to make sure any water that's left inside those does not freeze and break our pipes. And uh, make sure you use RV safe antifreeze. Don't use regular antifreeze. That is very toxic. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to go turn off the house batteries and make sure the propane shut off. Let's drain our fresh water tank. On our bounder, we have to turn this blue knob 90 degrees to the left or counterclockwise. Our tank was close to full so this is going to take a while. There you go. It's done. We're now going to do the low point drains. Turn your water pump on for 30 seconds to clear out the water. Make sure it's no more than 30 seconds because you can damage your water pump when you're pumping without water in it. Good. Yeah, see, it's about out of water. Now we're going to remove the water filter housing. Uh, you might want to have a bucket underneath just in case. Oh, I think we're good. We drained most of the water out. Look at that, in campground water. I'm going to send Sherry in to open up all the faucets. Next, we'll empty the water heater. To do that, we'll remove the drain plug here at the bottom of most water heaters. Make sure to release your water pressure here at your valve. If you have a rod in your hot water heater, this would be a good time to inspect and or replace it. While this is draining, let's go dump our tank. Since I'm using an air compressor, I'm going to use a pressure regulator. I have mine set to 40. You should check your owner's manual for your specific RV. I'm going to attach this line to my freshwater intake for my RV. When you start the process, remember to set it on city fill. Then do all of your faucets and your water heater on the inside. But before you disconnect your air, make sure you switch it over to tank fill to ensure that you clear what little water is in the line going to your fresh water tank. The first thing I'm going to do is force air through the water heater and then we'll work our way inside.
Now that the water heater is empty and I've replaced the plug, I'll turn on the water heater bypass. For us, our bypass is located underneath our sink. Check your owner's manual for the location of yours. Now, Sherry will stay inside and turn on all the faucets to warm so that we clear both sides of the system. Okay, I'm ready. Should I go? Yeah, the water's coming out now. A lot of water. Going. We have a Samsung residential refrigerator. Now, to empty this of water, we have to go into the ice maker and then we have a test button on our ice maker. We'll press that and it should start producing ice or trying to. And that will drain all the water is left in the system out. We may need a towel for this step. I'm going to put one <laughs> under the freezer door. The reset button is right under here. It actually says it, but it's hard to read. It's actually right on the ice maker. And I'll hold it. And it's starting to make a noise, like it's making ice. Okay, no water came out, we are clear. According to our user's manual, we have to pour one pint of antifreeze in each side of our drink. Be sure to wipe up any spills. And now we're going to go and winterize our toilets. You want to empty your toilet at three and a half pint RV antifreeze. Flush that down, add one pint of RV antifreeze to the bowl and leave it. We have a Splendid washer dryer combo. And to winterize this, we have to put in half a gallon of our antifreeze and then put it on the spin and drain cycle. Let's do that now. Let's turn it on. There, three minutes. There we go. That's it, we're all done. Now whether you choose the compressed air or the antifreeze method, it doesn't really matter. It's whatever you are comfortable with. Both methods work very well and both methods take about the same amount of time. If you're interested in learning more maintenance tips, check out our playlist here.